Okay, today I'm going to show you how to set up an autoresponder and an autoresponder series in one shopping cart. Uh, once you are logged into the cart, you need to go up to the top menu area and click email and marketing. Autoresponders, it's the first choice. Oops, and I need to log in again, so let me do that really quick. Okay, email and marketing, autoresponders. Okay, um, now you show up at the autoresponder campaigns page. Um, if you've ever made an autoresponder before, it'll be down here in a list. But if not, um, then you're going to want to create a new one. And to do that, you need to click the create new button right here at the upper left corner of this campaigns box. Okay, now when you click create new, it takes you to the autoresponder information page. And that's where we're going to have to fill in some information. First thing that we're going to need to we need to fill in is the campaign name, and this is just for our records. But uh, this is a good thing to to good book bookkeeping right here. So make sure you do put something in here that uh, explains what you want to use this for. I'm going to use it for a uh, an ebook opt in, and it, it doesn't have to be all one word. It can be spaced as well. The autoresponder ID is next, and that's just new, so you have no choice for that. Um, after that is the description, and again, this is just for your um, records, so fill this out if you want to. Um, if not, it's not a big deal. Okay, now below the description is an option to make this a featured campaign. Um, no, we don't want to make this a featured campaign. This is for a specific purpose, so um, we're going to leave this unchecked. Direct subscribe, we're going to leave that off. Direct subscribe is set up so you can, um, if you turn this on, the, 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 the system, the cart, will automatically assign a subscribe by email address that you can use to grow your list. It just lets you control the subscribe by email address functionality. Um, we leave it off. We just like to get people uh, the regular old way. Okay, and then the unsubscribe from option. Is below that and it will have other autoresponders in this box but if you are creating one for the first time you won't see anything in this box uh, this this lets you um, if one of your contacts in your email list uh, if they are attached to one of these autoresponders um, you can have the, the 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 shopping cart will automatically remove them from another autoresponder so if people opt into this one then opt into the one that we are creating um, or subscribe to that one that we are creating then it will bump them out of any other of the ones that they that you might think they're in uh, this is a little bit more further down the road this is once you have a couple autoresponders set up uh, so if this is the first one don't worry about this option this is more of an advanced feature anyway just an extra a little extra thing that you can add to your um, autoresponders but for the most part we really don't use them that often and um, so we're gonna just skip this step and not even worry about an unsubscribe from autoresponder thing okay next up is the from name and that's gonna be the name that um, the when people get the email they're gonna say oh well here's a, this is who it's from so and then also a from email so Market about pay attention to internet consulting, so, and the recipients on our on your contact list will see both of these: the from name and the from email. Now below that is the campaign type, and this is again another bookkeeping thing. It also helps in the future, so you should um, assign what type of campaign this is. Uh, there's different types. Uh, there's you can set up autoresponders for customers when they buy something. So if that's the case, you would pick customers. Uh, you can also just do it for affiliates that are affiliates for you. Um, uh, also prospects. Now these are people that aren't customers yet, but they could be in the future. So it helps if you can if you select uh, one of these. It helps with the bookkeeping. Okay, and you can also do other as well. I'm going to make this for prospects because I'm attaching this, this to an opt-in. And then a shareable, we always leave unchecked, no check in shareable. Uh, this is really just for if you have um, more than one uh, account with one shopping cart, you can create this autoresponder and share it with the other account. Most people only have one account, so uh, we don't... Uh, 
ever use this whatsoever. So do not check this. Now the last thing you're going to see is um, ours might look different than yours if this is the first time you're doing it. If this is the first time you're doing it, it should say you currently do have opt-in verification turned on with your account. Ours says you currently do not. And let me explain what that is. You can choose to have it on or off. Um, if you if you leave it on, that means in order for somebody to actually uh, get, ha enter their email and name into your contact list, they have to uh, verify it. So let's say they fill out the opt-in form, they get their autoresponder, and they also get another email that says um, you need to verify this, that you want to be signed up to this um, email list. Uh, and then they have to decide. Now, that's great for spam because if people complain that you're spamming, you can just say, hey, you opted into this twice, so um, there's no way that you know we're, we're spamming. You agreed to do this. But on, on the flip side of that, we also notice that people um, sometimes won't do the verification, and um, then you lose them from your contacts. So we take the risk and we uh, turn it off. And in order to turn this off, you click the little edit button, and it'll take you through the steps, and you just have to turn off opt-in verification because it's set to on and then you have to save those features we'll do that in another step but for right now after our autoresponder section is done we click save and it's going to take us to the autoresponder message now the autoresponder message is what the people are going to receive in their email first option is go to message leave this blank days delay is asking for a number and the number indicates how many days you want to wait until the, this autoresponder gets emailed out to the person. Uh, most of the time we want it to be emailed out immediately, so we pick zero. On top of that, or below that, message type. There's two types of messages you can choose, text only or HTML. And when you do HTML, a different format comes up. So you can add HTML elements, text, um, it looks similar to WordPress's options. And then you can also just do straight text. Um, HTML looks nicer, and uh, you're going to have some more color and some more graphics and stuff. However, sometimes uh, email browsers have a tough time opening HTML or displaying it correctly. So your email might look a little weird or funky if that's the case. Uh, to be better safe than sorry, we also can use the text base and most e all email readers can read text so there's a greater chance of not screwing up so we're gonna pick text for right now alternate destination leave that blank um, subject line subject line this will be the email subject line so this is very important remember don't put the word free in the subject line or spam will get it so uh, my gift to you um, and that's what they're gonna see in their email and then the message body is the actual email body, uh, the message that when they open up the email, they're going to read. What's nice about the um, what's nice about the uh, the message body is that you can make it personable to each person that it gets emailed to, um, and you would do that using merge codes. And let me show you a merge code here. These are merge codes on the right hand side, merge insert menu, and you'll look and you'll see a bunch of weird symbols like a percent sign, a dollar sign, and then in the, in the middle of that you'll see the word email, and then dollar sign and percent sign. And that goes on like that for first name, last name, name, company, phone, address, country, a bunch of different options. Now what if I click one of these, I'm going to click name. When I click name, if you look in the body area over here, you will see that same code pop up. Percent, dollar, name, dollar, percent. Now what that means is when I shoot my email out to, let's say, 300 people, well, there are, most of them are going to have a different first name. So the autoresponder is smart enough to see who it's being emailed to, and it will put their name in place of this gobbledygook code. So when it's sent to Jane, Jane's message will start out with Jane and then whatever else I type into this body area. Same thing with Jim. It's going to say Jim in his email. So it, it gets a little bit more personalized, um, and this is good. So I'm going to just say uh, name, which is it'll be their name. Then I'm going to say thanks 
for opting into my uh, for my book. Here we go for my book, um, and then it, it can be found here. Be found here, and then I'll put a website in. And that will be the link to for them to get their book in, in this example. So you fill your information out here for the body, and then you scroll down. And uh, you can't actually see it here. I'd have to zoom in for you. But uh, right underneath this destination autoresponder, you don't mess with any of this, but there's a save button right at the bottom. And you just click save. and that is it. Now you have a new autoresponder. Let's go back to our autoresponders. And there is our autoresponder that I just created, ebook opt in. It has one message and it has uh, no subscribers so far because I haven't emailed it out yet. But uh, it's there, it's created, and now I can have that attached to my opt in. And that's covered in another video.